Today on Metaphysical Mississippi, we have Gina Daniels. You've seen her before. She's back. She's with Jack Zinn, and she's going to be talking about all the things she has going on this summer. So join Krista and myself, Emily, on today's Metaphysical Mississippi. So stick around. Hey, Gina, how you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, but Gina was one of one of our early guests, wasn't she? Um, oh, yes, Emily, like the second yeah, so, or third. So <laughs> that's been, it's probably been over six months since we've had you on the show. And, and I don't think I was, I don't think I was in that podcast. Um, <laughs> no, so... <laughs> It's lovely to be with you, Gina. <laughs> yes. I did I didn't know you then. It was our that first was meeting. First. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we rambled on and on and on about my origin story, and you guys learned all kinds of stuff about my past <laughs> the last go around. Yeah, that's and we invited you back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's on you. And yeah. the, Emily, the the big takeaway is here is she came back. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. I so thank you. Up. Yes, I'm amazed that anybody wants to, you know, spend time with me in front of a camera and <laughs> let <laughs> trust me to record them talking. First, I, I want to say something about Gina's background i i y'all had a little pre-show discussion and i i kind of wasn't uh didn't absorb it all so uh can you tell us a little bit about what's on the wall behind you is that well, all your artwork um some of it is i've got just some like works in progress the uh paintings usually if i'm working on something i'll hang it up now the one up there with the white buffalo that one's been around for a long time that's just something that uh was a uh you know a process a uh, work of art that um, means, you know, is meaningful. And then I've got some other, um, you know, some masks from Costa Rica and um, a little Shama Mama over here. I think Jan made that. And I've got some other artists things and some things from Mexico and just just a conglomeration here in my home studio. Well, I love it. So, so did you do the white buffalo painting? Was that your work? Yeah, yeah, I, I did it several years ago. But Oh, I love it. Thanks. Beautiful. That's, She's one of my, uh, my, you know, my guides. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> well, well, we know you have Jack Zinn, and in the last um, interview we did, we talked about we were talking about Vibe Fest, and we, we talked about floating and all that. But you know, I don't know if we really got into uh, heart flow, heart flow creative. And I, I pause because I love the he art that is in that is the art part that's um, accentuated in your name. And um, I love that you are an intuitive artist, and um, and you are a creative wellness coach. And I would like today for you to share how you pull in your intuition, your creativity into all those aspects of healing and expression and how you also encourage others and guide others and teach others how to, you know, express in that way. So I'm really looking forward to hearing about that. That's my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me some art and I can talk about that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, so each month we do a like a new moon and a full moon ritual. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and so the heart rituals are basically like heart focus, heart intention, um, with along with art and ritual. So I kind of bring in heart, art, and ritual. And that's why we call it a heart ritual. Um, and so we do them in the new moon, full moon, and then depending on what's going on, I just before you know, I just kind of meditate on what the theme might be for that upcoming. That's wow. what I was wondering. I'm like, how does she come up with the theme? But of course, I don't know very much of like all the 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 moon cycles and all that. But 
Well, you know, there's a lot of information out there. So I pull from a lot of different sources. So I'm not an expert in the, you know, in the astrology realm, but um, I'm always learning and I'm very curious. And so um, I do pull from a lot of sources and I use the, you know, the, the moon that we're in uh, along with, you know, maybe the element, you know, so if it's a, so this, this last one, for instance, was uh, a new moon in Taurus and that's an earth element. And I just felt like with all the chaos that we had had with during the eclipse season, we needed some grounding. So then I, I thought about, okay, what symbol, cause I like to work with symbols and sometimes yeah. it's total animals um, or other symbols. And I'm like, what symbol really do I feel like really, you know, talks about uh, grounding. And that's where I came up with the elephant for this go around. Okay. So we had a really nice uh, event uh, last week. And um, it's really, yeah, so we all painted elephant energy. So it doesn't mean you have to paint an elephant, but we use that as our theme. And uh, we also were working with the root chakra during that one. So um, yeah, just kind of put all that stuff together. I love that. And, and um, you, oh, go on. I was just No, if you haven't been to one of those. Um, so we start out with a, just kind of like we in our little lounge area, um, we just kind of sit around on the cushions and chairs and, uh, or the floor and we just kind of have a just a, a discussion about the theme um whatever that might be and uh, we might do a you know a journaling exercise or a meditation or both um this time we actually since it was grounding we went we walked across the street into a little grassy area and and willow led us in a an earth um you know grounding meditation barefoot in the grass which was really nice and then we went in and we painted so um oh. that's kind of how we kind of incorporate the the uh, the heart and the ritual along with the you know the art. Is it yeah? Are are you always using um, paint, or do you sometimes use? Have you ever explored you know uh, other mediums or three D or or um, or is it right now just mainly paint? Well, well, I would say mixed media. Um, we do use uh, painting on the canvas a lot, but I've done watercolor on paper um, before. Um, we've done journal making. We made flags um, during one of them where we, you know, we, we've had many canvases on a, you know, where we did moon flags, phase, moon faces. Um, so a lot of, I do mix it up a little bit. Um, I would say a majority is gonna be painting on a canvas with it in kind of a mixed media. This, and uh, then the, is it usually, well, I haven't been, I plan to come one day but is it almost like well I mean arts and crafts for adults <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and and you know it's not one of those um you know you go to those paint and sit parties where everybody walks out with the same exact painting you know yeah. you're, you're the same blue background and the mountains and the stream or the whatever right and everybody walks out and almost with a paint by number kind of thing this is very intuitive um, which a lot of people like, but some people want more structure. So I can, I kind of just, um, depending on, I just kind of work with each person there and I give as much or as little guidance as they need or want. Um, and everybody walks out with something completely different because, you know, uh, one, one person at our last elephant, when she started painting something and it looked like um, a plant and she had actually brought this plant over to the center a couple months ago and this big elephant ear came out of this like aloe vera plant it wasn't it was like somehow it gotten in there and it had this big giant and it had just come out it was this beautiful big elephant ear and so she painted her whole painting was about was elephant ear so it was like a plant the plant and so you know what I'm saying she just took that a whole different yes. direction which is really cool oh I love that I love that Oh, so I was going to say, so you typically have those twice a month, uh, one with the new moon and one with the the full moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Try to make, we try to do it at least twice a month. Once in a while, it backs off to once a month, just depending on if there's other things going on. Yeah. yeah. The next one we have is June 3rd. I don't know when this will air, but um, we're going to be doing a new moon. Um, uh, and the theme is going to be focus. And we're Ooh. going to use the symbol of the arrow. Um, so that'll be, oh, our next one. I love that one. So let me oh. ask you this. If someone feels like they are not an 
artist per se and may be intimidated with the fact that, oh, I've got to come in here and paint something. Uh, so I say I'm asking for a friend, but 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 it's me. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm a very creative person, but as far as drawing and painting, I've always had that. Oh, I'm not good at that. Oh, I'm not good at that. Um, and when my kids were little, and I, we would do arts and crafts, and I'd let them paint, it would it would stress me out. I would I would. Uh, but so, how would you? Um, what would you say to someone who might want to come, but they're like, I'm not an artist. What do you say? Well, first of all, um, I would uh, say everyone is an artist because we all are co-creating our experience. And um, and you don't need any kind of art experience at all to participate in these. It's a very gentle process. And so I, you know, I always um, tell people like, let's just channel our inner five-year-old because to me, it's all about the process of the of the create. It's the creative process. It doesn't even matter what we're you know painting or anything. So you, I mean, gardening is creative, right? Um, cooking is creative, and we just happen to be working with paint or something along those lines. So we're just going to get in there. We're going to play with color, and most of the time I, we start out with with just a blank canvas, and I have you writing on it. You're writing your intentions with a sharpie. You can do that, right? You know. Then I give you some some primary colors and we just mix up paint. We play with that, smear that all over the canvas. And I'm, I mean, I really, the ones that come in and want to do it all perfect, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to help them let go of that perfection because that was me in my past. I want to always do everything just so. And then, you know, everyone else, I'm just like, let's just play around with paint and color and not worry about what the final outcome is going to be. It may or may not come out looking like an elephant. Um, it doesn't matter, you know? So mm -hmm. a lot of times my uh, paintings will end up with, uh, you know, just a lot of chaos, right? So that's the first layer, you know? So we, we on here, there's actually, there's three layers on here now. So um, this is before we ever even get to painting, whatever it was. I think this was the, um, when we did the, it was fire. So I think this was Phoenix. So we did, you know, a lot of different layers. And then I just had, you know, was just painting, stencils and different layers and then on top of this then I would help somebody guide them through painting that final outline if that's if that's what they want to do or walk home you know yeah. go home with just a, an abstract yeah. <laughs> I love that love that so um this is off topic not off topic but a little sidestep so how do you as an artist know when you're done with your work that's a really tough one for me um, because I'm not a production artist. You know, I know so many wonderful artists that are just so good at just pumping out the work. And for me, I'm more of a, like I play on the cannabis and I meditate with it and it just, you know, and so a lot of things are never done like this yeah. lady on the wall. She's not really done. In my opinion, I, I, I intended to go back and work on her some more. Um, but I just, haven't done that and so I'll pick up a canvas that's you know been laying around and I'll just play on it some more um so to, to answer your question probably when I am tired of it and I'll maybe put sign my name and I'll throw it at the studio up on the wall and with the price tag on it and I'm like okay or somebody comes to me and says how much do you want for that and I'm like oh I don't know um because I don't really <laughs> I don't like to sell the paintings you know I just that's really just just to make space for more. <laughs> that's right, really good right. <laughs> but that's a really good question because, um, you know, painting also doesn't always, you know, I just, it kind of tells me, okay, I, I think you're, if I'm done, if I'm just tired of it, that's usually when I'm done. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. I, I mean, I have the ability to do art. I just don't do it. Well, I just don't do, well, I've never, it's never been something that uh, I'm doing to really sell or, you know, but uh, part of it is just, I just don't do it. <laughs> do, do you, what's, do your, what's your creative outlet? I mean, I know like making these videos and things like that. Oh, I mean, yeah. you're not very creative. Well, um, she I, is an artist. She's just not doing it. Yeah. I can charcoal. I can paint. I can foil build with the 
and so you know ceramics and and stuff like that in college you know I I took art classes so I have the ability I just but my favorite is probably water color pencil oh. I like to the control of a pencil but I like to add the water to blend so that you know just paint in a paintbrush I don't quite have as much control with the paintbrush you know, to do the fine line. So I still have to have that pencil. So, ooh, that's deep. <laughs> I didn't realize that, but that's my favorite. And, I, and you know, and I, um, and I shy away from uh, faces. I like to kind of leave them a little because of the perfectionism, you know, aspect. Because you know you can fudge on everything but a face. Yeah. You know, the that eyebrow. you really yeah. gotta capture, yeah. you know, if you're doing a portrait of someone. But I mean, but I I, I have the ability to do it. I just don't too. <laughs> I would say they, yeah, do you enjoy doing it though? Oh, I do. Doing it? I do. I just don't take time to do it. You know. What about you, Krista? What is your uh, what's your creative outlet? So it used to be gardening, and um, Lord, I don't really have a creative outlet right now. She 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 can write. Yeah, you are a good writer. Poetry. Yeah. I mean, she's done that. Um, I mean, I. I I feel she's a better decorator than I am. You are. <laughs> I have your design degree. And uh, I piddle. Oh, man. But she's a great green thumb. I'm a piddler. She's a great landscape. I'm a what? You have a great, you have a good, you have a green thumb. I use, yeah, I'm just not yeah. putting it to use. Right. If you saw my yard right now, you would not. <laughs> I just like it, it it's not there I hope one day to get back into it but um but you know I don't really let me see this I do still love it but I don't really want to do it right now because I can't give it the time and energy and attention that it needs so for right now in my life and I'm not resentful about it but right now it would only frustrate me to try to do that because um the seasons of my life when I was an avid gardener I mean I planned my whole life around uh you know when I would get up in the morning and plan my day like when I was taking the kids here because that like I would plan when I was going to work in the yard I would plan when I was going to do see like like it, it you know and um so it, it'll come back just but just right now plus i i have six acres and it kind of got overwhelming mm. to to you know have that much space to where i just kind of let everything go natural again and um i kind of feel like there's a beauty in that in that i'm the past five or six years i've kind of let it do what it's going to do by itself um there is some issues with that because I have like trees growing up next to the house now that I need to get before it messes up the foundation. But but it's been interesting just to like watch things do what they're gonna do and, and not uh, you know, other than mowing and a little weed eating here and there and pulling some weeds we haven't done very much. And um so but but one day I'll get back get back into it. But it, it really makes me think, though, um, in the performing art, well, I don't know if this is a healing arts. This is what y'all do is the he healing arts. We are creators and how important it is that we, we can neglect that wonderful ability that we have. And Krista, you've planted that garden and you created that garden <laughs> and sometimes we don't want to go and 
face that maybe we've let it get out of control sometimes. Uh, this that we're creating, these are babies. And sometimes I'm just like, I don't feel equipped to parent this creative, this creativity right now. You know, so, yeah. so that's, I, that's it's interesting that you brought that up because that's kind of what's going through my mind when Chris was talking about the gardening. And I think about like our creativity also comes in seasons. So yeah. um, think about like, you know, when you plant something and then it grows, you harvest, and then we let, you know, we, it winters over and we, you know, we let it all kind of grow over and that's good actually for the land. It's good for the soil. Um, if we just plant a plant a plant it, it would strip, right? It would strip the soil from its nutrients. So right. you think about mm -hmm. like creative nature, um, even, you know, as a creative, whatever that might be for you, we all have our seasons, so and it, and they happen at different times. So sometimes, as an artist, I'll feel like you know I'll get stuck, but I'm intentionally now. I take it more intentionally. Before I would be like, oh my god, what's happening? Now I just like I embrace it. Like I go underground for a little bit and I just take some time just to let things, you know, fester, and mm -hmm. then back out. Like you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean springtime, you know, real springtime, but like spring. When things start mm -hmm. coming up, you know, you start planting seeds, ideas start forming, you start planting seeds, and then things start, okay, now it's time to start working on that project. Because a project, I know, Krista, you got plenty of projects going on. So, yeah. you know, yeah. that's also, is, you know, that's a creative process. So um, we, we've got to let our, allow ourselves to, you know, and give ourselves grace to have those ebbs and flows because um, it's good. We need that. And it's, it's healing for our souls and our psyche. So I'm, I am doing a lot of creative things right now, but they are in creating, I don't want to call it work, but it's, it's, um, it's that thing where it's the art production or <laughs> I'm producing something mm -hmm. and, and, um, to do something just for fun that has no end result, no destination, no game plan other than just for the fun of it. Um, the the main thing that I do right now for that is take naps. Oh, <laughs> if I can yes. take a nap, then I'm like, that's, that's my fun. <laughs> no, Ooh. I do lots of fun things, but 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 to do something that's that's just when I do have downtime to piddle. I, I just want to go take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think so. the importance of rest um, as part of our to-do list, recognizing that, listen to my body. I'm listening to my body. I'm listening to, because I work on uh, organically. Like Krista, I mean, like right now we're working organically. We work at night when we feel like it, or sometimes we don't. <laughs> Or in the morning, like I wake up early, but if I wake up at six, you better know I'm going to take a nap at 10 a.m. Because I'm a late night <laughs> sleeper, you know, so I kind of, I mean, well, you work late at night. We, yeah. When I have that on my plate, you know, when I have a schedule that goes along with a job I have, you know, mm -hmm. but I think that rest is important resting letting letting the ground rest mm -hmm. um, yeah. but i think we're in a tilling we're in a tilling and planting season right now mm -hmm. yeah i know in the last podcast we discussed a little bit of the history of you know it was jackson float and then it evolved into jackson but um this was y'all's first uh, venture into kind of a holistic sort of is this your first uh, entrepreneurial type of venture for you personally or you know Jason my husband's always had he's he's a musician so we've always had that that creative side there that you know I help him with that um, I worked the corporate job for you know umpteen years and um, so that's the first time that we did it kind of a joint venture and it was we've never done anything like that with like a holistic you know the the wellness center um 
our plan. We, we knew we wanted to incorporate the music, the art, and the floating somehow. Um, and, you know, and we, like we talked about before, this uh, Jack Santa's pretty much evolved into what it is now. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we are, we've included all of that and, and then some. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. But, uh, so what has been great is you planted, but then you realize that you need to add a few other different seeds than what you originally came. And now you've got a beautiful garden. Yeah, it's like companion planting, right, Krista? You know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I goes together, you know, so right. Right. Um, yeah, we started with, you know, with the things we knew we wanted um, and eventually started, you know, like, oh, this would go great with this. This, this is, you know, companion planting. So, um, and there are some things like Reiki that weren't even in my awareness at the time, you know, so when I got into Reiki, that was something that, I hadn't even, didn't even know that I would, you know, it would be so important to my, to me. So, um, yes. and Kristen, and then along the way, everything else, we just keep adding more things, you know, yes. right, yes. right. More, more, um, yeah. So, so is Reiki something that, that you, um, it's, it's been a more recent, um, tool in your tool belt. Hat, hat net, it's kind of yeah so i would say like if you wanted to like how things kind of piece together so um i had started the art uh creatively fit coaching program and and became certified coach for that um back in 2015 and started doing that kind of like across the table you know in my home before we started our business um then we started and were you still working in the corporate world then oh yeah yeah Absolutely. yeah then when we started Jackson, I was still working corporate and um, that was mostly based around the flotation therapy. Um, but, but then, you know, things just started opening up. So then I, when I, you know, started talking, there's a lot of people here in Mississippi that do Reiki and I didn't know what Reiki was and everyone kept on talking about it. And so I, I took my first Reiki class, my Reiki one, I took it because I just wanted to know more about what it was um, and had no intention on doing anything other than just learning. So Reiki went, I'm like, okay, uh, I still didn't like, like okay, I, I don't feel this. I don't know what's going on here. Reiki two, which is just the very next day, all of a sudden things hit. I was like, uh, okay, I feel that this is different. Mm -hmm. And then you start practicing and then about, you know, self practice self-care and, and probably about I don't know, maybe six months to a year later, started with um, pr actually practicing on others. It was it was it take a while, and mm -hmm. then um, the more I did that, the more I wanted to learn more. So, and mm -hmm. that took me down the path of master and then master teacher eventually. Krista, I, I want to let you. I just want to say just a little personal caveat for me. Um, I've had treatments done, and I think maybe I feel something, but. It hasn't hit me yet. Really, what everybody's saying about the power, it really hasn't hit me yet. So I'm kind of curious now. I, well, it helps me. Well, I'm glad to hear that some of the other people who who we've interviewed, you know, they had it and they got it, you know, like uh, right there in their initial, you know, treatment. And so maybe I, it hadn't hit me yet, really. I mean, well, it, 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 it's a, but it's also a subtle energy. I mean, I think well, it meets yeah, people subtleness, but yeah, where they, uh, but like, like I could feel like when you use the hot stones, when there's contact, I feel energy, you know, when you, when you give me a, a little, uh, Reiki with stones on my back. It was just, you know, relaxing and all that. But that oh, of energy that some people have expressed, it just, it intrigues me a little more. I'm just saying I'm a little more intrigued that maybe it just hasn't totally clicked with me. And maybe I need to study about chakras a little more too. <laughs> no, I think what Chris was saying too is it's like not everyone, um, even practitioners, I've even heard of practitioners never feeling the habiki, which is the, 
the feeling that you get when you can feel that energy, you know, between your hands. Yeah. Called her Biki. Um, Sorry. Biki, yeah. Is that right, Krista? <laughs> Biki. <laughs> I always like forget the little Japanese names. Um, and, um, but just because you can't necessarily, like, because we all feel the sensation differently, um, doesn't mean it's not working. So, because it's life, you know, life force energy. So, um, it's there. Um, it's, so, you know what I mean? And, and really, depending on why a person is receiving treatment, has a lot to do with it too, you know, if there's something going on or if it's just for relaxation. Um, I also want to say though, Emily, and I'm not saying this would make any difference, but you haven't had an, you've never had an official session. Correct. I haven't. I haven't. Uh, where you've gone to a practitioner and laid on the table for an hour and received what we, what the, the Reiki protocol, the, the Reiki. Um, right. Because, you know, when I did do a float and I've been reading about it and, and hearing other people talk about floats and it hits you after that's I did it for 90 minutes and the float uh, finally hit me when I was in the float tank at the 45 minute level you know or so it was like so you're right I have not been just immersed in it and just worked on so I guess and, and allowed to do that one day yeah <laughs> See? one day well I think we can hook you up with a practitioner somewhere I know. I know. If you throw a rock, you'll hit one. <laughs> if you throw a rock around here, you'll hit one. For I know. Sure. <laughs> but but how, how do you two? Well, I know you both are Reiki practitioners. How do you two prepare? How do you prepare? Um. Well, I know that y'all are the vessels of the energy and I'm hoping I'm saying that right because I may not be saying it correctly that you're the conduit or whatever but uh to sustain giving allowing that life source force energy is that what it's called life, life, life force life force energy what come through you at the, for an hour to 90 minutes you know uh do y'all have certain practices you use uh, to to get yourself prepared for that? You know. So, Gina, I don't know if this was the case for you earlier in my um, when I was still a newbie practicing. I I did more to prepare. I I, I think. Uh, but to tell you, I don't particularly have one set way. It depends on what's going on in my life. Um, because I've done, there's certain playlists I have that I've used in Reiki sessions that some that that if I'm like in a rush and I got to get to the office because I have a Reiki client and I really haven't tapped in yet that day, hadn't done my own self Reiki, I can just play that music on the way to the office. And it it starts because I I I have I have a connection with that music, and so as soon as I hear the Reiki music that I've used in many many sessions before, I start centering. I like I can feel it. like I, I I feel Reiki come in. I'm like okay, I got this. Things I do is li listen to the music in my car that I, I don't always do that, but that's one of the things I do to get me in the the right headspace when i come into the into my my space or the reiki room i will um either sage or, or light incense if i know that my client is okay uh with with that and um that that gets me in the zone but um gina what what else do you do so i would say like as a as a newbie you know reiki practitioner i i kind of went through the you know the the things that we learn and when we're when we are learning Reiki. I would do my little personal Reiki meditation that morning. You know, I would do some self Reiki that morning. I would look through my manual and remember all the hand positions, <laughs> review the hand positions. <laughs> but now um, I I had so I start all of my not just Reiki, but I think just all my personal practices now. I really get, try to get heart centered first, and so. 
the um, the heart math stuff that I'm doing with the heart coherence really plays mm -hmm. into kind of how I prepare now for whether I'm going to do art or have you know practice Reiki. Um, so what I do is I just get you know I, I do some breath work, heart focused breathing, and I'll get myself centered. And I, I, you can you know it, it takes just a couple minutes to do that. Um, and then once I do that, then all of a sudden it's like, all right, it kind of that just, it's like you said, it kind of like that kind of turns me, turns my Reiki on and, um, yeah. and then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready. Um, and I found that, you know, even working with clients that might be rushing in, you know, then they get on the table and they're in that rush. I, I do the same thing with them. I have them just do some of the heart centered breathing with me. Um, so we're kind of creating this little heart space and then, you know, I'll start practicing Reiki. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another thing, uh, I, I do work with the symbol some. I mean, I go through phases, ebbs and flows with where I practice with the symbols more often than I do other times. But also when I'm driving to the office, if I'm thinking about the symbols or, or drawing the symbols in my mind or in the air, it it um, will activate it and and get me in the right space. But I don't know if that, did that answer your question, Emily? Or was that the kind of answers you were? Yes. I Yes, it did. Thank you. I, okay. I, You're already thinking about something else. Go yeah, for it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I wanted to go to, um, you were talking about being heart-centered. And um, I saw that you're, you're a heart math certified practitioner. What does that mean? So HeartMath is an organization that's been around for probably 30 years now that ha they have been studying the correlation between heart and emotions, heart and mind, kind okay. of heart brain, co heart brain coherence is kind of how it started. Oh, okay. um, and so they've studied all these techniques of, and would, you know, hooking people up to different types of biofeedback and studying the, you know, heart rate variability and, and how all that works together. So it's very, it's very interesting because when I started getting into reading about it, um, Joe Dispenza's books. What I, I was, I went down a whole Joe Dispenza path, and uh, he used it in some of his meditations. And so I started researching heart math and um, just all the great work they're doing. I mean, now fast forward, you know, they're doing, they're actually working now with uh, trees and the earth than the resonance of the earth. I mean, they're doing, they're really studying a lot of different things. So not just, you know, the human aspect of our heart, you know, what, you know, the field that we have, the energetic field that we have. Um, but when I started studying that and then, you know, with Reiki, it was just like, they're very similar. It's almost like, like you know, it's almost like this is the sciencey side of, of yeah, that's Reiki, what I'm side, like you know? Yeah. Right. Um, and it just went really well with a lot of the other things that I'm, you know, interested in with the, you know, the shamanic practices and, um, and then, you know, art, creating art and, um, and the practices are very, very simple. They're simple breathing techniques and, um, and they're easy to teach and they're easy to learn. And so um, I have been studying with them for, I don't know, five years or so through five, four or five, seems like a while. Um, and I just completed a trauma informed course with also yeah, that's true that's that. and that was um very very interesting very enlightening and um you know so so many of us are dealing with trauma whether it's our own or generational trauma um mm -hmm. and so i found that now even just the way i do yoga the way i practice yoga is more trauma informed the way i practice you know um when i'm working with you know working with others with facilitating art practice. Um, I, I work with some ladies um, on Mondays. I work at um, I extended care for women who are in recovery. And so that all that comes, you know, to play with, you know, how working with them, it, you know, it's just using the breathing techniques along with the art. It's just, you know, everything just kind of came, came together. So that's where I came up with heart flow creative, because it is to me, it was like adding the heart with the art and creating a state of flow and, oh. and the flow state, which is, you know, you want to look at the psychological state of flow is very similar to, um, 
this, you know, all the other things that we're trying to do, whether you call it awakening, enlightening, enlightenment, you know, um, yeah. getting into that, that um, yes. meditative state. So um, it all works. Cool. Are, are, so, are so did you do your uh, heart math studies before Reiki? Or were they around the same time? Actually, I kind of did them simultaneously. Oh, that's cool. And, yeah. And at the time I, I looked at them separately at first. And I'd kind of like, I'm doing this thing over here and I'm doing this thing over yes. here. <laughs> and, um, and then the more I studied, the more they went, oh, wait, these really work well together, you know. So um, the same with, you know, I went down this whole shamanic uh, path as far as learning, you know, about shamanic practices and really drawn to like the indigenous practices. Um, I think that comes back to my heritage. And, yeah. you know, and then I saw, wow, that goes like hand in hand with Reiki, you know, so all these things just, um, you know, they're, they're not separate per se, right? You know, we learn, we, we you know, learn from different cultures and different um, practices. Beliefs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, uh, my heritage is Mexican, um, Native American, uh, my dad's side. And so he was first generation. Um, his, his parents were born in Mexico. So he was first generation, um, grew up in Arizona. And then, you know, that's uh, kind of, but, but it's interesting because when I grew up, because he was acclimating to the American culture, um, he really didn't like teach us or, you know, at the time it was like, we didn't talk about that. We, you know, we, we spoke English, we didn't speak Spanish, even though all my, my relatives did. Um, I kind of learned this other kind of Spanish, <laughs> like I can understand what they're saying, but I can't speak the language, you know? So um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of, that's my heritage on my, my dad's side. Um, and then my mom is, you know, she's English, Scottish, Irish, <laughs> Cherokee, <somewhere. laughs> yeah. when I started going through this spiritual journey, um, things kept coming up for me that were more, I would say, Native American, but also um, Aztec, Mayan, you know, those kind of things. Ask you yeah. what's your, yeah. Yeah. And so I, you know, and I didn't know, I got, you know, and sometimes whatever you're kind of like really interested in, kind of, you have to kind of pay attention to that. So um, I didn't know, you know, didn't, I just thought, oh, I thought I was just interested in it. And then I, um, when I did a soul retrieval, my soul retrieval um, with Tracy Crosby, um, then a lot of the past life stuff came up for me and, um, and she said there was definitely, you know, connection to that heritage that was, that's why things were coming up for me. There's a lot of pieces that we had to retrieve from, <laughs> from different time periods, put it like that. Yes. yes. It still works. Yeah. And again, this may not have to be on the podcast unless y'all think it's interesting, but I don't want to offend anybody with my stumbling of question. But soul retrieval, do you feel, do, do you feel a pull? I don't feel a pull to shamanism, but do you feel a pull to shamanism? Yes. And that's, that was another thing that kept coming up for me. And I didn't know, I didn't have a word for it um, yeah. until I started really studying um just as i do right i get curious about something i go down the, the path yeah. that's how all these things happen um yeah. and that you know i you know i i don't i'm not a shaman i mean and I, I i practice shamanic practices i would say um i i like to lead a you know a shamanic lifestyle if you want to say like that um you yeah. know but um but really all that means is there's a couple things. So, you, you know, the shamans in a culture were the, you know, they could have been a medicine man or medicine woman, could have been a healer, could have been um, the wise one in the, you know, in the, in the uh, village or the tribe, could have been the doctor, could have been, you know, so the witch, you know, there's all the different yeah. cultures and time periods that had this type of a person. So the word shaman kind of came up when I was piecing all this together. So I'm not attached to the word, you know, whether, you know, you call it, you know, shamanism, but, but because I, as I started studying, there's, I noticed, you know, that this was happening in all these different parts of the world 
and they didn't have the internet back then. So, you know what I mean? There's something about, you know, people working with the land and with, you know, the earth and, and that's really where I feel like mine is more like, I, I feel there's just something about, you know, especially like the, the West, you know, and the, the desert, even though I don't want to live there, um, uh, moved away from there, you know, and, and, um, the land and, you know, I can really feel it there. Um, but now I can feel it everywhere. Like I love, I saw that you guys went to visit like one of the mounds over here. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the... Jason and I, yeah. We went to visit Serpent Mound in Ohio, which was just like, I, I love that kind of stuff. I just like, it just like, you could just, you know, so I just feel like there's so much history and, and, you know, our ancestors, um, you know, if we can tap into the, you know, the guidance that they can give us and, and also, you know, the trauma that maybe we've, we've got because of ancestral trauma, you know, and maybe if we can do some healing, we can maybe go back and heal some of that. Okay. So I see you also, you're certified in yoga. Of course, that's just another piece of the, you know, of the, the garden <laughs> that you have. <laughs> and, oh, and I just want to add in, you, you know, when I asked you the question about um, what do you do to prepare for Reiki sessions or whatever, you know, I do burn a candle with each of our podcasts, you know, twin moon magic candle. And, and this spot, and this 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 video is brought to you by you know <laughs> yes. Jack Zia, will you get a candle? Like, I'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor. I was, but no, I was <laughs> gonna say no. Like, like, I do. No, I, I'm finding it is important for me to get into some kind of prepare, prepare for uh, my performance or what I'm about to do. Um, and I used to really not do that. And, um, uh, so, um, are y'all, do you offer any trainings above just coming and getting, uh, you know, a uh, treatment? Do you also teach practitioners to do things through your, there at Jackson? Well, um, I have a, a program that I've been um, working on for a while that, and I've done bits and pieces of it yeah. from on the art side. Um, and I've done several like online workshops, um, especially during COVID, I was doing that. But one of the um, things that I always encourage people to do when they start a creative practice, but I find that we should do this probably for anything that we're gonna be working on is I like to set sacred space. So whether it's you're going to go in and, you know, have a Reiki session or you're going to start a creative project or you're going to start your podcast or um, and why not just do it when you're going to go in and, you know, do the dishes. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, basically take more of a, like a ceremonial approach to your daily activities. But but setting sacred space before you start that, whatever it is, you know, and that could be, you know, so I've got, you know, I've got my crystals out here, like even before this podcast because I knew I was going to be changing gears from working on the computer on some stuff to visiting with you guys right. you know I come in I'll sage um, light a candle get my crystals out put those around me you know maybe do some you know heart-centered breathing or or practice some Reiki for a few minutes um, so those are things that I do to set my sacred space before I start whatever it is that it's kind of like a transition you know and I think yes. that that's important to do um so as far as answering your question is do we train people to do that i think we we do in a way we're modeling that as we you know in the yeah. virtual we do that in our heart tools um and then one of the programs i am on is a uh -huh. certification for the coaching program that i do so um basically like doing a heart flow coach certification so people you know if that were depending on where you are in your journey, if you wanted to kind of go through and, and learn some of these techniques and then use them in your own yeah. business, your own, business, yeah. your own whatever. Yes. And I also um, know that, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris, were you going to say something? Oh, uh, uh, I was going to say, I also know, and this is, um, well, the business consulting side, 
when you it uh that that probably leads into um if if somebody's wanting to open their own practice or just be an entrepreneur that you also offer those services as well as a business uh, consultant, right? Yeah, so my my background, my corporate background was yeah. working with um, business owners. So I managed insurance agents, but they were all independent business owners. So, you know, they <laughs> called me boss, but I wasn't their boss. I mean, I work for the corporation, but yeah, I would work for the insurance company and I'd manage all these agents who were individual business owners. So my job for, years and years and years, over 20 years, was to work with individual business owners and help them grow their business from, you know, analyzing their reports to marketing to hiring to da da da, you know, the whole gamut of running a business. Oh. So that's my, that's my background. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, after I left the, after I retired from that, I kept a few clients i took some time off they begged me to come back i took a few cl insurance clients that i still and i still have one that i still work with um but for the most part now i offer those type of services kind of like a la carte for um heart-centered I, I, I like to work with heart-centered you know small businesses entrepreneurs yeah. somebody that's kind of yes. you know maybe starting a take taking a hobby starting a business with it or oh. has a business and just wants to take it to the next level yeah, I love the way you say it. Heart centered. <laughs> Heart centered business. Well, you know, it is different than working with the, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling yeah. that. It's just, you know. Chris, do you have any more questions before I start asking about some, some of other events that are coming up? Go for it. Go okay. for it. You know, um, I saw that you have a few things for the youngins in the community coming up for the summer kitty Zen art camp and after school programs. And you have it there and you're located in Midtown in Jackson, Mississippi. And um, I think it's beautiful how you, your space, does feel like a community space, you know, like you're there for those in your community. And um, so uh, do you want to share a little bit about uh, your passion about providing a space uh, for children in that community? Well, um, I had started Kid is In back way back, way, way in the beginning, probably I think 2019, 2018, 2019. Um, and I had big visions of, of it being, you know, kind of a holistic kind of approach to work with kids. And I brought in a bunch of different people and we we're all going to collaborate on this and you know how people do things, you know, we got busy and everything. So I'm like, well, let me just, I can do the art. So I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And so I started with the art and, um, and I did art camps and after school programs back then. And I did them in our space. Now that was before we had a lot of the retail in there that we have now. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of, you know, shh, 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 people are coming out from massage, shh, you know, that kind of thing. So a little, that was a little, you know, hard when I had a, a group of kids. I still do birthday parties, small groups in there, a couple hours here and there. Um, and I do after school where I'm working one or two or four kids, you know, in the back there. Um, now that, the summer camp that I've got coming up in June, um, I'm actually going to be working next door. Um, the building um, is owned by Pearl River Glass, and he's going to let me use utilize that classroom space. So I'll be right next door with, with the kiddos doing all the good stuff, um, which is great because then we can get all loud and, and, and messy and not worry about having to be all quiet and zen for them. But um, yeah, so, but, but now I have incorporated in not just art. I mean, we're trying to do, so first week is going to be kind of like a around the world, different art from different parts of the world. Second week is going to be almost what I do with heart jewels. I mean, we're going to be, you know, doing some heart centered things some kitty yoga um, and, uh, and of course, lots of art. Oh, oh that sounds fun. Sounds yeah. fun. 
Can you take big kiddos for this camp? <laughs> Virtual. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's a weight limit requirement. <laughs> An age. And, uh, I mean, age. Age and height. <laughs> you cannot enter. Uh, nowadays, you know, I guess we can't do that because you got some tall kiddos um, and some short, <laughs> short adults. So um, yeah. anyway, uh, let's, see. Um, let's see. All right, I think we talked a little already about some of the Heart Lab, and these are your community programs. Did you did you touch on that yet? Well, Heart Lab is um, is a program that combines the, a lot of the stuff that I just talked about with the kids. Yeah, like that's the kids program that I added in the the kitty yoga, the heart stuff, and the art yeah. together. Um, I started pitching that to um, administrators because I wanted to try to start getting that into schools. Right. And first started, were saying, well, I want, I need that. So I kind of pivoted and I created a program for educators and caretakers. And I, I, um, I beta tested it here in Midtown at the little um, school over here and with some of the teachers. Um, and so it's, it's that project still in its infancy, but the, pro, the but I'd like to continue to expand that. That'll be, supporting educators, teachers, and then, and, you know, and parents and caretakers, which will trickle down to the kiddos. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So that's Heart Lab, um, Heart Lab, which is, you know, it's, you know, it's just another little project that I'm um, still working out the kinks on. Yeah. That, that means <laughs> AKA <laughs> funding. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I want, I'd like to really be able to offer that you know, with, uh, with, uh, I had a grant when I first started, when I first launched it. Gotcha. And, so, um, and then, you know, when the grant money ran out, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, I'd like to offer that without having to charge the participants. So that's, gotcha. that's what I'm that's working on there. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Gotcha. So then, um, so we, we've talked about the monthly new moon or full moon heart rules. We've talked about the Kitty Zen Summer, and all these events can be found on your website at jackzen.com, or we'll add it in the show notes. Um, let's talk about Heartflow Warrior Costa Rica Retreat. Why don't we? In September. Oh my goodness. Do you want to share about that? Yeah, so basically, this is the kid is in for adults. <laughs> in oh, so that's the one I go to. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, um, as a family, we go to Costa Rica, try to go every year, um, and we go to the same place over on the Caribbean side. And this last year we were there, it just really came to me that I'm, I wanted to invite people there and, and to do a program there. So, Heartflow Warrior uh, Costa Rica Retreat is going to be like an art venture. Um, so, you know, art, yoga, Reiki, um, uh, it'll be September 19th through the 25th, um, limited to 12 participants. I think I've got four spots left. Um, and uh, all the details are on at heartflowwarrior.com. Um, but in a nutshell, each of the days, there'll be a travel day. And then when you get there, there'll be each of the days are going to be based on a, an element um, and we'll be doing, um, you know, for the first day is going to be heart opening, of course, heart centered. We'll be doing a cacao ceremony with one of the local farmers there. She's going to bring in some locally grown cacao and do a cacao ceremony. So opening the heart. Um, and then we'll start our first art activity <laughs> that day. Um, and then each morning we'll be spending time down on the beach to start the day with some type of a morning meditation uh, Dramatic mindful movement type thing. Um, and then we'll uh, go into doing different types of activities based on the day. So we've got one day will be fire. We are energy, working energy body. We're going to be starting shamanic energy painting. Um, and we'll do, we'll build a big, you know, have a fire ceremony on the beach there. And um, one day we'll be doing, we'll be water and we'll do snorkeling and kayaking in addition to our art. Um, and uh, one day is 
earth, which is body. So I will be doing a medicine walk um, mm -hmm. and more art. Um, and there'll be some time to do some other, you know, activities around there as well. Um, but yeah, so we're just basically moving around the medicine wheel, um, the you know, with the different directions and different uh, elements each mm -hmm. day. So there will be a theme each day, but they'll all be um, come together. So um, there'll be some good relaxation time, a lot of good community building, and um, all the things we love. So if you so, want to go, so you better get your passport. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course required. Go on, so much to do this. Um, so what for for those of us that that may not know exactly what it is. So, so what is the medicine wheel? Oh, good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, so the medicine wheel is basically a container. Um, that can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, and it's used in a lot of different cultures. Some cultures call it the year of the wheel, there's medicine wheel, there's different sacred hoop. Um, and so that's another thing, one of those rabbit holes that I went down because it was just really speaking to me, um, especially when I was doing all this work with my ancestry. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, when I started setting all the different medicine wheels, all the versions, there's, you know, there's differences. And basically if you were to divide up, you know, what the medicine wheel looks like. You've, we've probably all seen that you've got the different directions and you've got the different uh, seasons and the different times of the day and the different times of your life and the different. So it basically is a representation of all those different cycles of our, you know, in our life. And, um, and it's used in a lot of different ways from, you know, healing to, um, just you know living your life along you know because the depending on where you, the culture you know where where that you were you know the you would plant at certain times and then you would mm -hmm. you know you would nurture and so and then you would harvest and then you would go to the rest like we talked about before and so you kind of move around mm -hmm. the medicine wheel. um so i took all of the different versions that i found out there and um came up with kind of my own interpretation of of the medicine wheel and that's what I'm using for our retreat called the I'm calling it the heart flow warrior medicine wheel because I don't want people to say say yeah but you know this it's not evident that's what yeah. that's me, not you know, right. Jesus is fire you know so if you look at you know because because Kelly and I have had this conversation a lot of times and and you know her background is like the Celtic uh you know and so hers all of her elements are kind of like a half turn or a quarter turn from where mine are um, and even when I look, when I studied all the different um, Native American medicine wheels, there's differences in all the different tribes and cultures there too. So, um, oh. yeah, it's, it's super interesting. And I just, I, I don't know why I'm so drawn to it, but um, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with the medicine wheel. I'm going to have to. <laughs> it sounds so exciting. It's actually uh, in the background of my logo. I don't know if you've noticed that, but. If you ever look at my job, oh, my uh, yes. you're gonna see the yes. yes, I love that. I love that. So uh, I also see now. Okay, now we're gonna come back. We jumped up to September. Now we're gonna skirt but and get back to June. June twenty fourth. There's a mid fest, and that appears to be a free event. What all is that? So, well, you know, our, we're, we're located in Midtown and right. I sit on the Business Association of Midtown, the board. And so every year we've got two signature events. We do a holiday studio tours. And then during the summer, we do something called Midfest. And it's just a music and art event, uh, free to the public. And it'll be this year at Midtown Depot. Um, and the um, uh, Magnolia Sunset Market is going to be doing all the vending, you know, taking care of all the vending there. Um, I know we have a lot of makers in our, in, in your viewership. Um, so if anyone's interested in vending, they can contact uh, Magnolia Sunset Markets directly and look for vending opportunities there. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna be a, a nice day of, well, since we moved it to June, it's gonna be evening. So it'll be three to seven on the 24th of June. So uh, Mac, uh, what was the name of that Magnolia? Magnolia Sunset Markets. Okay, is that a business that's in the Midtown? 
No, they are, they're a Jackson based. They're just a group of people that kind of run different uh, markets. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. So they're not gotcha. associated with us at all, but we're just co collaborating with them to handle the vending part of this. To bring in the vendors, right. Oh God. Right, so vendors, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh. Uh, well, Emily, you know what we haven't said yet? Where our next, where June's Metaphysical Mississippi Meetup's gonna be. Oh, well, yeah. I don't think it made the list. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Go on and share it, Krista. It's on my calendar, Krista. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as many of you know, the second Wednesday of every month, Metaphysical Mississippi does host an in-person meetup. Uh, typically, it's in the Jackson area. You know, we want to go across the whole state of Mississippi as we we grow and, and have more partners with, with Metaphysical Mississippi. But um, but for the month of June, we're going to meet at Jackson for the meetup. This will be our second time. I think it was, oh my gosh, when did we meet? It was... If it was June last year, I think it was August or July. Okay. Yeah. It, it was like, in the summertime, though. Yeah. I do remember it was in the summer because, um, well, by the time we left, it was dark, but it wasn't dark when we started. <laughs> A lot of us stayed and visited. Um, but, but yeah, so this, this month, what is that, Emily? June 7th? 14th. Open. June, June 14th, 14th, I believe, is a Wednesday. Okay, yes. Yeah. So June fourteenth at seven p.m., Metaphysical Mississippi will be uh, holding its meetup at Jack Zen, and we'd love any of you who who can come to come. We typically um, kind of get to know each other, sit, talk about what's going on in the community for the first half, and then the second half we try to discuss the topics. I'm sure. Gina, Gina and I will put our heads together and, and come up with a fun top, topic and discussion question for the group for that night. So uh, we'd love for everybody to come. And, and that is, you are located uh, behind Millsaps on Wesley Avenue. Is that, is that what That's you're right. on, Wesley Avenue? So just get on, what is that, Woodrow Wilson and take a right on, maybe a left. Take a left on depending on where you're coming from, take a left on uh, west and then west. a right on Wesley. Wesley, yes, yeah. yes. So. That's what, anyway. what, 155 Wesley Avenue. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so thank you so much. We're excited about having yeah. our second visit with y'all. <laughs> yeah, we really, we really enjoy hosting and it's, uh, it's hard when you know when you're a business owner and your your off your office hours your studio hours are you know at the same time because we don't get to get to a lot of the a lot of the different uh, meetups that we would like to so we're really excited when we can bring it home. <laughs> and and uh, if you don't mind me doing, I'll encourage especially any first time visitors to Jack Zan come a little early and and look around the store see because uh, you sell um, you have herbal products incense crystals what what all do you sell in the store I've, i'm yeah so um, all of those we also have, yeah and then we do um you know we support probably 12 different artists with different types of you know um, handmade jewelry and candles um pendulums amulets art i mean all kinds of we you know we try to support different artists there so we've got a lot of their different types of um, things like that. Um, yeah, um, bath, bath and body, natural bath and body, um, you know, and then, you know, your typical sage and that kind of stuff, incense. And maybe for those, maybe after the meetup, for anyone who's been curious about what a float tank is, would you possibly let them have a sneak peek? Because there oh, still yeah. may be someone in the tank before the meetup. So, so maybe if, uh, cause you know, some people are still a little on the fence about, um, what does this float tank think about? <laughs> I yeah, think that, yeah, we'll do a tour for yeah. sure. We'll do a tour and, yeah. um, yeah. And, um, just to, just to, um, you know, sweeten the pot a little bit, we might just have a little discount code for you to try it for those who Ooh. come to the meetup. Oh, for those who come Ooh. to the meetup, there's, there's another 
reason to come. Well, I may have to come to town now. <laughs> I like I like the float tank a whole lot. Um, I've only done it once, but uh, I plan to do it again. Oh, and before we end, we've also got to talk about the other event that's happening. Um, on the other one, July first, the Elevate. Elevate. Yeah. Elevate. And, you know, when I read that it was an immersive sound experience and holistic bazaar, and I'm like, immersive? <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> so do you want to share a little bit about what's, what's all yeah. going on? So our, you know, uh, our uh, buddy, John Yoakum is the brains behind this. Um, so we are going to be collaborating with holis uh, holistic Hearts collaboration. Yeah, Holistic Hearts Collaborative. Um, there's a lot of holistic and there's a lot of hearts in our little community here. Um, yeah, so um, we're putting together a, it's so hard to describe. <laughs> um, so basically think about the, the pre-show is gonna be like the Holistic Bazaar. So we'll have a few artists and, and vendors out there like you would probably see. Um, we'll have a, a, a DJ doing some ambient music with um, opportunities to try Reiki, chair massage, those type of healing modalities um, pre-show. And then as the show starts, um, we're going to start in with a meditation and sound bath. Um, and it'll be uh, a group of sound healers. So, you know, singing bowls, didgeridoo, you know, you know, the players that we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it's going to be, you know, you're not your typical, just, you know, it's going to be a, a really nice collaborative uh, effort there as well from a sound healing standpoint. Then we're going to go into an, uh, an acoustic act. Betsy Berry Hill will be uh, performing and she's just got an angelic voice um, very nice and this whole thing's called elevate it's all about uplifting our vibration um, we'll be doing some different interludes between the music's never going to stop so then we're going to go from her hers into some more uh, probably some more upbeat um, you know some drum maybe drum circle type of thing and then Jason Daniels band's going to play the entire uh, downloads from the universe album which is his last album which is all about it's all very uplifting songs oh. um and then we'll close out well not even closing out yet so then after oh. uh that, then um fifth child who's a local um artist performer will be performing some of his uplifting music as well and betsy barry hill and and fifth child also have a a song that they recorded together that they'll be performing um together and then we'll close out with some ec ecstatic dancing. So dance set with uh, John, uh, DJ John Juan will be closing. Wow. Us out. So, wow. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. And it'll be at Dueling Hall on July 1st. Uh, Pre-show, you want to get all of it. So you don't want to just come right to the last minute. But so doors open at 6 and it'll probably go to like 1030 or so. And there'll probably, wow. there should be food and drink available there as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. always thinking about is it going to be food or drink available to purchase? <laughs> yeah, they'll, yeah. Have, they'll have their bar open, and then we've got um, Diamond is going to be catering um, her uh, vegan. Oh. It doesn't taste like vegan, right? So, yeah. Right. So oh, my can, gosh. Yeah. Because, and yeah. And we'll have some other little vendors with some, you know, some other coffees and pastries, pastries and different things like that. Perfect. Perfect. Because, because. I'm I'm not a vegan unless diamonds cooking, and then I am. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Her food so, is good. It's good, healthy food. Um, that's, that's why I look at it. Is. It is. It is. It and and wonderful. It I mean, it tastes wonderful. Um. So, will the food be included in the in the ticket cost, or is that a separate? That'll be that'll, a separate cost. That'll be separate cost. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So. Good. good. And then the regular price is gonna be thirty three dollars. Wow. Oh, that's not that's not bad so for for all thirty three dollars thirty three okay, mm -hmm. and you can buy them directly through Ticketmaster. Um, and I think by the time you air this, I should have some also some physical tickets uh, at Jackson that oh, you don't want to pay a handling fee. Oh, um, perfect, perfect. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about today, Gina? I mean, I feel like I've given you the 
<laughs> I had you do a um your your resume lineup from top to bottom. <laughs> it's your fault. You gave me you such a great bio to like <laughs> use the outline. <laughs> you made my I, job so easy. <laughs> well, you know, I always have a lot going on. Um, this is what we do as creatives, right? We always come up with more projects and things to work on. Mm -hmm. There is one other thing I wanted to mention because a lot of your viewers attended the resonance um, retreat and camp out. Um, and if you happen to be there or if you happen to see pictures there, you would have seen that I brought a, what I call the community canvas. Um, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the community canvas project in general and where I'm taking it next, um, if I may. Yes, yes. Real quick. yes. Um, so I take these big canvases out to different community events and I have people just paint all over it. And it's just it's just kind of like what we talked about before. It's like it's how we start all of our paintings. We're just playing, we're doodling, we're playing with color. It's, you know, it's it's I call it like Zen graffiti. You just do whatever you want on, on the canvas. Once we get it all good and filled up, I will um, take it and cut up the canvas and I'll make it into different things like um, guitar straps or bags or journals um, and, and you know, there'll be more of those type of products that will be coming out. Um, then we sell those products um, typically at our, at our shop or online. And then I take a portion of the products, sales of those products, the community canvas products. Um, and I use those for scholarships for programs like my kids in art programs. So it kind of goes full circle. So people who are painting on the canvas are actually helping someone, an underserved um, family would be able to participate in, you know, in some type of program, art program. So that's, that's been going on since 2019. Um, it kind of took a lull during COVID. Yeah. Um, but the reason I wanted to bring it up again is um, I'm, I was uh, taking my community canvas out um, over the weekend to an event in South Jackson. Um, they were doing a wellness fair down there. And I was, I was putting a new one up, getting ready to take it out there. And all of a sudden it came to me. Um, and I started, I should have this probably by the time you air this, I should have the site up, but I'm going to have it now where it'll be trackable. So when you paint on a canvas at an event, you'll get a little code and you'll be able to follow the journey of the canvas all the way through. Um, oh, and wow. so if someone purchases a journal or a guitar strap, they'll be able to also go on the site and look to see the journey of the canvas, like who, where it started, you know, maybe some pictures of people who painted on it. Um, and then, you know, eventually I'll have it all the way through to where there will we'll list the benefactors of who participated in, you know, the scholarship programs. It'll, you know, it'll take some time. Um, but I thought that would be a kind of a cool thing where you could just follow the journey of this canvas all the way through and see, wow. you know, where your part came in, whether you purchased it, whether you painted on it. Um, and then I'm also going to have some opportunities for people that they just want to become a friend, if they want to adopt a canvas and just donate towards that, all that money is going to go directly to the scholarship program. So, um, oh, wonderful. so I'm, um, I started the site just to kind of have a, a way for people to start tracking that all the way through. So oh, I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> because the program is in place, but it's kind of like you don't know what happens after you do your part. So, so Gina, crazy. Gina. When do you sleep? <laughs> and and when you're sleeping, is that is this all all these plans working out in your brain while you sleep? And so you wake up and it just happens because you <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to I'm listening to usually some type of recording about some something to while I'm sleeping. Yeah. Okay, I'm about... okay, Chris, it's I'm an about... artist, it's an artist thing because you know I'm bombarding you with ideas all the time. Oh, I don't, I, tell you, to... I don't tell you have the ideas I have either. Sometimes I, I have to tell her stop because she's stressing me out. Not I love you, Gina. I want to say yes. I want to be like yes. you one day. You are. You are. <laughs> or I'm like you. I, I want to be a so... yes person. Do it. And, and... <laughs> I'm like, Emily, can we finish what we're working on before we start? I know, because that's, you're, you're saying that, like, you start a canvas and sometimes it has to sit there and then you got to go start another canvas and start another canvas. So, oh, yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just have what I, I call, I say, put it on the list. So as we have these ideas, it just goes on the list. 
And it's sometimes you go back and that's kind of like the seat bank. <laughs> and we go yes. back like, hey, where's that? And I'll we'll revisit that later and we'll plant those seeds when it's time. May, may we do it for a metaphysical Mississippi? We should do a canvas that night. That's a great idea. I'll have, <gasps> actually, I can, I'll, yes. have, I'll, I'll have one ready to go because- Thank you. Uh, and then we can, have, so the proceeds can help, uh, uh, yes. I'd yeah, love that's another, that. another thing I wanted to incorporate in there is have it where, you know, a corporation, maybe a, a classroom or an organization could actually use it to fundraise for their, you know, their, yeah. as a fundraiser for them too. So. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. We want to see everybody come out to Jags in for our metaphysical meetup on June 14th from seven to eight 30. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, but come a little, come, come a little early if you want to. And now I've said that, now that means I got to get there early, but <laughs> I got it. <laughs> You come early. I'll got, I'll take care of them until you get there. Yeah. No, they'll be open. I'll probably try to. Get, I'll get there. I'll try to get there early. But um, come early and look around the place if you haven't, or if you are a frequent flyer at Jackson, come early and and visit. Uh, because they'll they'll be open. But the meeting starts at at seven, and you know if you're getting there at seven ten, that's okay. We're very laid back. We don't take names at the door. Or anything. Well, we do take names at the door. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> but you don't get a tardy slip it's okay <laughs> okay so well thank you any other last tidbits we need to throw in there or i think we covered yeah yes thank well, you there is one other thing that oh, we'll, we'll announce later on but um well gina, gina will be back soon because gina yeah. and i are collaborating on on something that we're very excited about. And um, we'll just say that, you know, Gina and I both, we, we talked about Reiki, we, we both, um, Reiki's definitely a part of our personal practice and, and the work that we do. And um, if y'all know me and y'all know Gina, we both love to collaborate. We like to work with other people. And so Gina and I will be joining forces with our Reiki teaching and we have a lot of ideas we're, we're working on dates we're working on curriculums um and I, I think it's just the beginning of lots of different things I Emily and I both look up to you so much Gina you've been such a an example and inspiration on how to do things you've taught me so much um and just to be able to teach alongside you no, no basically I'm I'm getting to be her student, and so um, I'm I'm so I'm so excited. So more to come. We hope to have some things coming up in July or August, but we just haven't finalized that. Uh, it might might be after the Costa Rica trip before we really uh, <laughs> hit the ground running strong because that that's another uh, big thing Gina's got going on. But uh, but stay tuned. I think later this summer and in the fall we'll have some stuff ready so so i'm excited <laughs> more to come <laughs> oh i did all the talking dude you want to say anything? no perfect thank you i know okay. i didn't know if we're gonna let the cat out of the bag yet or not but um no thank you i'm, I'm honored to and thank you so much um emily and krista for everything you guys are doing for our community um and thanks for having me on this has been so fun as usual um, and uh i look forward to seeing more of you yeah. yes yes thank you gina <laughs> well gina again thanks for joining us and i want all of y'all to have a great afternoon <laughs> and go by jack zan <laughs> yes yes <laughs>